Okay, now I'm going to get a little bit more technical. And for this, I'm going to grab this chair because I'm going to do a little bit of, of uh, Photoshop work here to demonstrate to you how a shutter actually works. Earlier, I held the camera in front of that projector. And I showed you slow shutter speed lets a lot of light in. A fast shutter speed is like boop, almost nothing. That's a high level. I'm going to show it to you in more detail because it gets very nuanced when you use fast shutter speeds and flash photography. How does it work mechanically? It's not intuitive. So what I want to do is open up a shutter simulator, which I've created in Photoshop. So here we are. This is the film's point of view. When the shutter's closed, the film sees black. <laughs> now when the shutter opens, it works like this. And it actually moves from top to bottom. It lets in the light. And then after enough light has hit the film or the sensor, a second shutter curtain comes down from the top and closes it. So there's two mechanical curtains. One opens, one closes. And when you're shooting a thousandth of a second or an eight thousandth of a second or a twelve thousandth of a second, they move very, very fast. But there's another trick that they use to get the amount of time into the ten thousandth of a second range. Let me go back and reset things. It'll first open up a little bit. And then, before the first shutter curtain opens all the way, the second one starts to come down. And then what you get is essentially a traveling slit that goes up and down the sensor, exposing just a sliver of light to the sensor at a time. That's how you get insanely fast shutter speeds without really strong springs. And you, know, you don't have to have the shutter curtains moving that fast. You just make the slit very, very skinny. And then it becomes a timing of two solenoids. And that, then, then that becomes a, a mechanical engineering problem. So that's how it's actually done. Now, if you're taking a flash picture with a fast shutter speed, how does that work? Well, who remembers the old film cameras of the 60s? All right, if you had a flash on top of your camera, like one of these, and you shot with a flash at a <coughs> speed that was faster than the flash sync speed, who remembers what would happen? Anybody? Yeah, you get a you get a horizontal bar inside, and here's what's actually happening. If you're shooting at a very very fast shutter speed, the first shutter curtain would start to open, and then, as we saw before, the second shutter curtain would go down, and then the flash would go off right about there. So you didn't see the top and the bottom because you had a fast shutter speed. So the camera manufacturers had to do something and define what's the fastest shutter speed you can shoot at and still have the entire area of the sensor completely open to light. That's called the flash sync speed. And it works like this. What's the fastest shutter speed you can use before you start to get that slit? When the image is open completely, then the flash goes off. And then the second shutter curtain comes to you. Then the second shutter curtain starts to come down. In order to work with flash, the shutter must open all the way, and you cannot use that traveling slit trick. Every camera is different. In the 60s, the fastest you could shoot with a flash and have everything open was a 60th of a second. And then to speed that up, the manufacturers changed the, the direction of the shutter from left to right, which is a longer distance, to the top to down. And that way, they were able to make the shutter, the flash sync speed go from a 60th of a second to 125th of a second. Nowadays, you can go to a 200th of a second or a 250th of a second. And that, that means a very, very fast shutter coming down and a very, very fast shutter uh, closing as well. So that's the problem with flash. There are new techniques now that help you get around that traveling slip problem. With modern cameras, you can actually shoot at a thousandth of a second or a two thousandth of a second and still use a flash. And the way it works is like this. Remember those oscilloscope drawings I showed you yesterday? Here's a timing diagram. X-axis is time, Y-axis is light intensity. Normally, a flash would go off like this. A big burst of energy and a small amount of time. Newer flashes are more nuanced. You can take the same amount of energy, but spread it out evenly, a little bit over a longer period of time. And that's how they have a system called high-speed sync, or HSS. 
Normally with flash photography, you want to do sports, you want a big instantaneous burst. If you really want to use a fast shutter speed, you will use this high speed sync mode. The same light intensity spread over a little bit of time. And that way, the amount of time it takes from here to here is just a little bit greater than the time it takes for the traveling slit to go from top to bottom. So you can evenly, you can evenly illuminate your traveling slit using the HSS technique. And it's a great thing. What's the downside to high speed sync? Well, your flash intensity is a whole lot lower than it was before. So you have to make sure your subject is reasonably close. Because yesterday we learned about the light fall off. If you're twice the distance away, you receive one quarter of the amount of light. So if you reduce your flash intensity, make sure you correct other factors. Make sure your flash is close to your subject. Make sure your f-stop is wide open so let more light come in.